the quality of praise and worship that you give tonight is entirely up to you. Amen. Come on. Can't nobody praise for you. Amen. So we want us to get into the word uh, singing tonight and praise and worship. Amen. And sing from your heart. Come on. Worship from your heart. Praise Thank God. You, Amen. Turn to page 390. You got a song book close by if you like and, uh, and sing with us. I know a lot of you know this song, but it is a good song. There's power in the blood. Sister Heather, don't leave it.
How many know the man? Oh, some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest Some call it home. I call it home. <laughs> Wrong key. I'm sorry. Let's do it in the right key. Ready? B flat.
Somebody I'll need to say up. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise hallelujah. One thing you need to remember tonight from this point on, you need to remember the word amen. If you hear something tonight that comes from God and comes from his word, you need to say with your mouth, Come on. amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, amen. The woman that uh, the angel came and said, you're going to have a son. His name is going to be Jesus. And uh, she had to say something. What she said was this. You remember little Mary. What she said was, be it unto me as thou hast said. Now, do you know if you look up the word amen in the Greek dictionary, it will say this. It means, be it unto me as thou hast said. Come on. Come on. Amen is not just a, a religious thing that Pentecostals shout out all the time. Come on. It actually says, I receive that. Come on, somebody. Just one word from God can change our lives. Yes, sir. And, but you know what? There has to be a receiver. That's right. Amen. Somebody just saying it and somebody just preaching it is not enough. There has to be a receiver tonight. I received this morning and I'm going to
going to receive my receive tonight. I'm glad to see our sister back here. She came this morning and she desired to have a refilling of the Holy Ghost. And I believe that she got it. But you know what, sister? You're going to need some more. That's right. Come on. Come on. The Bible talks about be being filled. That's right. Continue. So that is a continuous thing. You got to always desire the Holy Ghost. And I like what our, our minister said this morning. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the filling and the refilling of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Oh, yeah. Amen. As the Spirit gives utterance. And it's very important. You know, your heavenly language is very important when you don't know how to pray especially. That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. When you don't know how to form it in words, you need to get in the Spirit and begin to speak that heavenly language. Amen. So that, you know, the devil even don't even know what you're, what you're saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. He knows English, and he knows Spanish, and he knows Greek and Hebrew. Yes, he but he don't know Holy Spirit tongue talk. Yes, right. He don't know it. Don't know it. But you know what? God knows exactly what you're saying, even when you don't know what it, That's right. it is. And oh, I'm, I'm excited about the Lord. Praise God. I want you to put your hands together and welcome our ministers for tonight. They're going to bless you. All you got to do is open up and receive because they brought it. Hallelujah, it's in His Word, His Spirit, and in song. She said, Lord, the preacher said for me to hold on to my faith that you're going to heal me. 
that you're going to manifest yourself and you're going to take care of this. And she said, when I woke up, I could see. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God, no, it's back to the person. It'd be wonderful. Yes, all the time. He deserves all of your praise. Yeah. Right. All your worship. Amen. Lord. Listen to me. He works with thanks, thankful people. That's right. Thankful people. That's right. There was two lepers in the Bible that ever seen. Come on. Jesus healed all the time. Yes, he did. And they left, turned and walked away, and one turned around and came back. Yeah, he was fell down and said, I've got to thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the difference was? The Bible says he was made whole. Yeah, yeah. come on. You see, when he healed those ten, he stopped the process of the flesh eating away. Right, come on. That leprosy eating the end of their fingers and toes and their body rotting off. He stopped that process. But the one that was thankful... He made him whole. They grew back. Come on. The toes grew back. Right. The fingers grew back. And he was back. That's the difference in being thankful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in here. <laughs> I love to feel what I'm feeling. But if I don't feel anything, I know something. Come on. <laughs> what, did, what did Jesus tell those those? Folks, and he gave him power to cast out demons and to heal the sick. He said, and they come back rejoicing that. over that fact. Right? He said, Don't rejoice. And he Amen. said, Rejoice not that the demons are subject to you, come but on. rather rejoice because. Your name. What? You know your name, name is written, written down, down in the right. Lamb Book of Life. All right, come on. That's why we need to come to the gates of Thanksgiving and to the court to pray. If we never hear the choir sing or anything, come we still on. got to shout. Yeah. We still got the reason to rejoice. Right. God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm just still excited as I was this morning. Maybe more so. I bless you for being here with us. Amen. Bring it, man. I hope you're not in a big hurry. I tell people if you're on your way to hell, you don't need to be in a hurry to leave here. If you're on your way to heaven, you're not going to be in a hurry to leave here. Yeah.
Thank you, Jesus.
way to go. That's right. Yeah, come on, speaking in tongues. Thank you. We're, Thank you. we're preaching from time up in uh, Lebanon, Ohio. And there was an elderly man there. He had just turned 91 year old. And he was shouting all over the house. <laughs> I said, we're going to do this song for you. I believe when you die, you'll die speaking in tongues. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I'm going to say one more. Come on. Praise God. Thank you. I'll still believe in speaking in tongues. I heard the pastor talk. Oh, yeah. Yes, come on. Absolutely. I love that part. So the devil on the Lord should say, you know what? One time, I'll tell you what the Lord showed me. When I, we still had our property in Arkansas. I was... I was out mowing uh, out of our house set about 600 feet back off the highway. I was out mowing up by the highway by the fence. And, and, uh, I was praising the Lord in my mind. You know, Come on. we know the Lord knows the intents of our heart. He can read our minds. To the devil, can't do that. Right. But he hears what you say. That's it. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I know you're thinking. Right. I'm giving me praise and thanksgiving and yeah. honor me. So I would look up at her home and I would praise God for her home and I'd pray for right. everything I could think of. Right. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> he said, but Satan, your adversary, yeah. your enemy, yeah. needs to hear you praise me. Come on. Well, yeah. Don't Come sit there on. and think about it. Come on. Open your mouth. Right. You're the offspring of the speaking of God. That's right. Amen. Speaking spirit. That's right. Amen. I don't know what the Come word on. Almighty really means, but it wasn't enough that God did anything without speaking it into existence. That's right. He spoke the word. He spoke it into existence. Spirit. And he said, you need to be like me with the Holy Ghost and have enough courage and enough belief and faith to declare things that are not as though they were. Yeah. Speak. That's right. Let the devil hear you praise me. Right. Praise God. Don't just think it. Don't sit on the pew just thinking about, well, I almost shouted. I almost raised my hands. I almost got up and run around this building because I felt the joy of his salvation in me. No, don't no, no, almost do anything. Right. Come on. Amen. Open your mouth. You're the offspring. You're the only offspring of a speaking God. The yes. angels are not his offspring. Right. He created angelic beings and something he created. And then the animals are not his offspring. You are the only thing that was created in his likeness and his image. And I want to tell you this. You are the only thing he's coming back after. Right. He's not coming back after this earth or the moon and the stars and the planet. All that's going to burn with a fervent heat. Amen. If you're right with God, he's coming back after you and me. He's, you're his prized creation. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God. Well, glory to God. Yes, sir. Uh, God. Thank you. Lord wants to hear you That's praise right. him when you need to do it. It's a commandment that we do that. Yep. But the devil needs to hear you do it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. You need to make it up for and hear the devil can hear us all the way Come down, on. down the road somewhere. Praise God. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I don't know about you, but there, you know, there, there is churches in this country, big churches, a lot of churches, and they even before COVID come around, they wanted less church and less noise. Yeah. Wow. And after COVID, they want less church and less noise. Yeah. Less church and less. I don't know about you, but I want more church and more noise. Right. Yeah. Let the control the noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with that. Well, yes. Yes, sir. Paul said to Corinthians, we've been made fools for Christ's sake. Yep. He did. He said right. that. Now, he's not calling you a fool. He said, we're a fool for Christ's sake. Yeah. Yep. And I read some scripture, more scriptures in that context right there. And it, it says, in essence, it says, you know, the world thinks we're foolish. That's right. They do. See? Yeah. I, I looked up that word foolish. Mm -hmm. This is seemingly a little ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, there was another definition of appear lack 
Jackie who it stinks. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that before. The world thinks we're foolish. But yes, we they do. It's not about something we can't see. Right. Come on. It's easy to you us to believe in sin until the world sees us believing. Uh, it's a total right. contrast. Yes, right. The world thinks we're foolish. Yeah. The devil thinks we're foolish. Yeah. And even the angels snicker at us. Mm. Mm. We humor them. Yeah. Come on. But I read where God likes it. Yeah, he right. He likes it. And whatever he likes, I want to do it. Yeah. Come on. Amen. He likes it when you lift up a voice of triumph and shout with a voice of triumph unto the Lord yeah. and praise him. Make yeah. a joyful noise. Serve him with gladness. Amen. Amen. We need to do it more often. I'm going to tell you because he likes it. When you do what he likes, and he's already here. I want to tell you something right now. He was here when you got here. Yeah. You know why I know that? I have preachers say, well, I don't know he's here because I brought him with me. No, he was here when you got here because God fills all time and he fills all space. Yeah. Right. See, there's no geography with God. Where would he go? Yeah. Here's the deal. He either manifests himself or he don't manifest himself. Mm. It's always up to you and me. If we don't praise and worship, you won't yeah. ever know he's here. That's right. Yeah. Come on. But if we start doing what we're supposed to do, see, it's not a suggestion that you worship and praise. It's a commandment. Yeah. And when you start doing what the Word says to do, and you start giving Him adoration of praise and thanksgiving, oh, and you start, you know, not because you feel like something about a new job or something, I'm talking about because you know something. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And when you start doing that, He can't resist. Yeah. When you begin to praise Him and honestly thanksgiving to Him, He's going to manifest Himself. And when He manifests Himself, and then you say, well, He showed up. Yeah, He showed up. Because, but He manifests Himself. And when He does have things that begin to happen, yeah. you don't have to quit. Keep on requesting the same prayer request all these years that you've been doing. Because when you get His presence here, He's not going to just take care of it. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. Why? Because you exalted Him. Man, that's right. He can't resist Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. you know what the... The divine law of attraction is. Mm -hmm. The divine law of attraction, real simple, it's a need. And when you present your need, see, He's attracted to your need. He's attracted to hurt. He's attracted to your sickness. He's attracted to loneliness. He's attracted to all that stuff that you're experiencing. He's attracted to that, but you have to present your need to Him. Mm -hmm. Like you did this morning. We finally came up here, and sometimes that's the best service when someone presents their need. And then we begin to pray, and we begin to, to call on Him, center. and we begin to praise Him, and all of a sudden, Holy Ghost starts moving. Oh, yeah. And then someone else says, Well, I want prayer too. Yeah. And then someone says, Well, I need to go ahead and get prayer too. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Well, like follow the leader. Yeah. But yep. you got to quit doing it. Quit waiting on somebody else. Right. Come on. The preacher already on up to sing that song. I'm going to just try to say this. I've read that scripture many times in John 5. Where there's a man that's slain laying at the pool of Bethesda. Right, yeah. Amen? Yeah. 38 years he's been there. Yeah. Yep. Because when a, that pool would be troubled by an angel at a season of time. I don't know what that season of time was. He would come and trouble that water. And whoever got in that water first got healed. Yeah. So I don't know what the season was. If it was once a year. That water had been troubled 38 times since that man had been there. Yep. And he got there yet. Well, they Jesus come by. Yep. And he sees him, he talks to him, he, he says, Will thou be made whole? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I read that and I thought, well, no. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because why did I say that? Because when that man began to answer, you know what he said? Well, ain't got no man to help me. Ain't no got nobody to help me. You know don't we need do? no man. Somebody else goes up. Somebody else goes up there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's true. Come well, on. they didn't play music so long I go up there. They didn't preach so long. You know, they all kind of... I thought about that then. My God, if I knew, I had to get in that water first. When I thought it was about time for that age to come, I'd be crawling that edge of that pool. Yeah. I couldn't walk, but I'd be crawling. Yeah. That water, I'm going to fall in it. I'm going to 
keep on waiting on somebody else. Come on. Right. Come on. That's it. Uh-huh. If he waited long enough, you'll be enough to do with the record. Yeah. Woo. Pentecostal people. So worried about what so and so thinks. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you care about your enemy so much for? Yeah. Yep. Who are you? Who am I? Right. Who am I? I'm not worried about my enemy so much. I think I guess I am. Because I'll be back to the room and I say, God, did I really say that? You let me say that, Lord. I play you. You let me say that? I ruined my image. I did that one night because I was preaching about that river that was raging. That Joshua brought the people to the edge of that river, getting ready to cross over to the to the promised land. And God brought them and parked their carcass right there at the right time of the year when that great that river is raging and it's flooding. Yep. They came flooding his banks. Yep. And he said, Sit down. I want you to sit down for three days, seventy-two hours, and remember and recall how good I've been to you. Mm-hmm. I want you to remember some stuff before I let you cross. Yep. And I got preaching on that, and I said some stuff. And I went back to the Lord and said, I'm going to say all that, Lord. I would talk about that river walking me through my ministry. It's laughed at me so many times. When I'm trying to get through, that river's walking me, and it's laughing at me. I can't get across. But see, we're fixing to go across. And he said, I'm here for you to, wait, to think that. I'm here for you to feel like you destroyed your image. And I said, why? He said, because Amen. until you get rid of the flesh, yeah. until you get that old flesh under subjection, you'll never challenge that river. Mm. Wow. Come on. So you're going to have to crucify your flesh. Quit worrying about your image. Yeah. If you feel like shouting, shout. Oh. You feel like running this altar, go to it. Don't worry about what anybody's thinking. Yep. You need to worry about getting conformed into His image, not your image. That's right. Amen. Well, I ain't charge you nothing for that sermon. <laughs> Praise God. I was sure I was going to sing this song. I wanted her singing. I didn't know she was even walking out. That blind is left by and I didn't know she took off, so I see her back here already. But I wanted to sing this song. Yeah. When I first met her, we uh, she wrote this song. I said, You wrote that for me. The title of it was I'm gonna love him. <laughs> and now I want you to listen to the song she wrote about well, a few years ago. We we'll sang that. Very strong. And I hope I haven't took up too much time to just elaborate some of stuff. I feel a lot of stuff in this church. I guess I'll, the pastor will allow me to maybe come back someday and maybe we can have some service. Yeah. Man. Take a little time to preach to you everything that God showed me and gave me. It ain't nothing. I'm a, I'm a dumb old country boy. <clears throat> Didn't he finish high school? I went to a G, what do you call it? GED. GED. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You know what? If you really I get it. open up your understanding mm-hmm. of the scriptures, see, understanding is a wellspring of life yes, sir. in the heat that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know what Proverbs 4 says. Wisdom, yeah. wisdom is a principal thing. Get knowledge, get wisdom, you get. but with all of your getting, you get understand. Get understanding. That's right. Well, I'm going to love him more, and I'm going to praise him more. Amen. I'm going to make that a promise. To
A guy named Lucifer led the choir up there. I could read scriptures now. Ezekiel and Isaiah on that. He was he's top to prepared in him. He was one of God's prized creations in the angelic beings, and he led the worship. He wore all these jewels. Yep. The onyx and the gold and silver and the, and the diamonds and the, the carbuncles. And there's a list of those jewels that he wore. Yep. When he would lead the heavenly choir into worship, the shining glory of God would reflect off of his jewels and not of the heavens. Right. You see what happened to him? He got exalted in himself like some preachers and some gospel singers thinking they don't have to have the anointing to make those jewels shine. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know how to do that. I got time. See, he, what happened? You know how fast God gets rid of that spirit exalting yourself up level with Him or even beyond Him like Lucifer did? He was cast out as lightning. 360,000 miles per second. <laughs> Along with a third of the angels. That's right. Some of them angels are starting to grow under the sea. Yep. The Freites River that's drying up. That's right. The prophecy said it would dry up. That's right. You know, some of those fallen angels is there. Yeah. The Bible talks about it. And people are starting to hear groanings under there. Yep. So warm. We're living at the in time. You should rejoice. Yeah. Even you and me that's in our sunset years that's a little older could see the coming of the Lord. Yeah. Right. Woo! What a time to live in. Yes, right. In this dark time of all the trouble and chaos and the demonic spirits and perversion as Solomon and Gomorrah and even worse in our country and in the world. Amen. That's when your light can shine the brightest. That's it. Amen. Yep. And you need to keep lifting it up. That's why I'm trying to encourage you. Right, oh, amen. Hey, man, to, to hold on. <laughs> yep. Get you a bulldog grip yeah. and hold on. Uh -huh. Third of the angels. One right under the Bible. Give you an idea how many that was. You never really know how many. One right under the Bible said, I see in a band of angels. And they were 10,000 of 10,000. Of thousands, is that right, Cheryl? Thousands and thousands. Of thousands and thousands. Now, we're pretty good at math. That right figure right there is a hundred million. Hmm. Another writer in the Bible said, I've seen a band of angels and they were unmovable. Couldn't even know them. So if you take the low figure of a hundred million and the third cast out, that's 33 and a third million. Mm -hmm. That spirits were still here because spirits don't die. They don't nope. Those are demons. Right, yes, That's what you face when you go out that door. Yep. That's why you need to have a walk with God better than you've ever had. Because they are more vicious than they've ever been. They're more blatant than they've ever been. They want to attack you and your children. You know what's going on if you keep up with stuff. Yep. They got perverts for teachers in public schools that don't want the parents to know what they're teaching the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Demonic spirits are everywhere. Yeah. Yes, they are. Matter of fact, there's some of them outside that door right now doing push ups, waiting on y'all. <laughs> I'm getting ready for you. Yeah. Why? Because you've been in the house of God. Yeah. And the first thing you want to do, you, and then when you leave here, is discourage you. Oh. The thief cometh. But to steal is what I told you. You know what the word cometh means? That means he intends to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you got to do? You got to have an intention when he shows up. I'm going to beat his brains out with the word of God. Yeah, come yep, on. come on. Have right. Yeah. Yep. Beat him yeah. Yes. Glory to God. In the word. Seems like I've took that more time. Than You're fine. Than I, don't, I don't feel like y'all rushing me. No. Sometimes I feel that way, but. Places. My eyes. Maybe they'll help you here. I'm going to give you. I feel like reiterating something I said this morning. And I'm not real familiar with all this, but it's a really simple sermon. It's what I told you about that word that Paul came up with. 
And everybody, I'm going to read some scriptures here. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter 4. Verse 16, 17, 18. Paul said in my first answer, he's standing in front of the king, Herod. He's on trial. You know, back in the day, it may come today, you'll be on trial for preaching the word of God. Mm -hmm. yep. come on. Especially if you talk about homosexuals. Uh, -huh. uh oh, is that what I'm saying? No, sir. That's uh, right. Come on. You yeah. don't want to hear it. And my first answer, at my first answer, the old man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray God that it not be laid to the charge. Yep. And then he come up with this strange word. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me yep. and strengthened me. And by that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all Gentiles may hear my ear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Yeah. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me into the to his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So I want to preach to you if I can. God help me. I felt impressed as I had so much other stuff. But I've learned that if I don't obey God, you'll pay for that. I had a lady ask me to preach a sermon at a cafe one time in South Arkansas. And she said, I want you to come to our church and preach that. And uh, I just kind of said, okay. I was there a few months later, and I was hoping she had forgotten you know, about that request. But she didn't. And that wasn't really what I felt to preach. And I went ahead and obeyed her. And it was real flat. So maybe this will encourage you. I was a little rough on you this morning. But I want to encourage you. We've got to be encouraged. And sometimes, it, there's probably going to come a time we're going to have to be like David and you're going to have to encourage yourself. Amen. See, I wanted to preach that when he was in Zeekland. You know, he left because he was part of Saul trying to kill him. All this stuff. He moved to the land of the Philistines in Zeekland. Yep. All his people went with him. His family, all his brothers, a whole bunch of them went with him. And David, for 16 months, he didn't worship God. He rode on his horse and went around like a fool doing all kinds of stuff. And, but he, he took off that evil all over praise. He didn't do any praise. He didn't write any songs. He didn't write any songs. And one day he came back to Ziglag and he just to the ground. And they took his fans, his sons and daughters, and then took the captain and the women. All the Bible said all was great and small. I mean, it was adults and children. They didn't kill any of them, but they took them all. And his people got so upset at him, they wanted to stone him. His own people wanted to stone him. He buried his face in the ground. However, oh, thought to bring that e father old, he could put it back on. Because for 16 months, he hadn't talked to the Lord. <sighs> and the Bible said, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. And when he made that request, Shall I recover? Shall I recover? And the Lord answered with two back. You shall recover, yeah. and without a doubt, you'll recover all. Oh, yep. Come on. Come on. Oh. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what am I talking about? To get back what you've lost, you've got to go back to what you left. Church people. Come on. God is so gracious, all you've got to do is ask Him. All you got to do is repent and say, I'm sorry. And whatever you've lost, whatever desire, and whatever hunger and thirst, and whatever joy, and whatever he had, you had a while back and you've lost it, you can get it back. Just like that. Come on. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I feel pretty good about that. I'm not going to just preach it. 
Praise God. You hold on to this word. It'll help change your life. It'll give you a Came up with that individual word. He said, This story is he stood before the king and everybody forsook him. You know. And he said he had to stand alone. No one would stand up and testify for him. Nobody would be a good witness for him. They just all observed him out there in that courtroom. Yep, just forgot. Yeah. But he said, notwithstanding, and I told you this morning I looked that word up. It's a powerful word. And it said it means, nevertheless. In spite of the fact. <laughs> right. Amen. Nevertheless, in spite of the fact, the Lord stood with me. Amen. Everybody Amen. forsook me, but the Lord stood with me. Right now. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, I want to explain some things to you as I go here. I want to, the word facts has come up for a bit today, so. Feel good about this. Man. The fact is anything that's done or exists that is real. Yep. Circumstances or conditions believed on. Not, not a fantasy. It's a fact. Okay? Yes, sir. Number two is the word factor. That's an element or influence. That contributes to the results of something or that which produces a new condition in an object or situation. A factor. Maybe I should call this the God factor. Mm. Number three is the word conclusion. It's the last step of a process of learning or making a judgment on obvious facts. A decision made after an investigation a thought or examination. See, it is possible for you to be right with your facts and be wrong with a conclusion. Yeah. Okay. The woman at the well in John 4, Jesus said to the woman, give me a drink. She says, you don't have anything to draw with. She got her facts right, but she's wrong in her conclusion because the living water is standing right in front of her. Mm. Come on. My God. Thank you. Her facts had to do with the natural. Okay? Come on. But God's facts has to do with the supernatural. Come on. My God. You can get a hold of that supernatural. It will override the natural facts. Amen. My neurosurgeon says you shouldn't be able to stand on your feet more than 15 minutes because your back is so bad. He said your back is used up. That's the words he used. I said, well, I still use it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Come on. With it. Come, yeah. on. Come on. Well, I want to know how long are you on your feet when you go to them churches? So, who knows? As long as I got to be. Some people think I preach too long. <laughs> <laughs> Altar service may last hour. Come on. Who knows? Yeah. Hey, someone asked me, how can you preach too long? I said, well, I got a lot to say. <laughs> I said, I'm like my father. I'm eternal. Time means nothing to me. <laughs> so thank you, people, for us. My Lord. But let me introduce you to the greatest fact. The greatest fact is don't let the natural facts frustrate you. Yeah. Right. It will frustrate your faith. If you keep listening to the facts. Yeah. I told that doctor, I said, look. He said, hey, he said, I can't believe you do all that. I said, look, you're an intellect person. You've studied all the facts. Sure. Right. I said, people like me have to study the supernatural facts. Right. Yeah. Come on. So he just looks at me kind of funny. Good. Well, you've got to have an understanding that there is a God that still cares about us. Oh, yeah. yep. There is a God that even when you're in your pain, or in your trouble, he hadn't forgot you. That's right. He may not choose to raise you up yet. But you know what? You still got a reason to rejoice because he's still the magistrate. He's still the imperial potentate of the universe. And we have to give him praise and glory whether he ever heals me again or not. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Come on. Praise God. Because I know he can if he wants to. Mm. I don't know why he don't heal me. He sent me a cancer. He gave me that COVID when I was dying. He healed me of a broken heart years ago. And I didn't know how I was so messed up. I couldn't work, couldn't eat. You know, everything was wrong. And I couldn't. I was just messed up. And I got to quote that scripture. I started to quote that scripture in four, Philippians 4 and 6. says, let your request be known to God with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So I just started to quote that. Because that supplication is your specific request. And I started giving him thanksgiving even when I didn't feel like it. Right. And I just kept on. I said, God, you got to help me. I can't work. I can't take care of these two kids. My mother's left me. They run off, run off with, with another old lady guy. And, you know, and I, I got to stay here. And I, I'm just in trouble. I mean, you know, and you know why? Hey, that peace. And you know, the rest of Scripture says, and when you do that, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and keep your mind. And you know what that happened to me? One of the greatest miracles of all that happened to me because I woke up in a few hours and that peace was there. I could eat. I could work. I couldn't understand it. The Bible said it would be out understanding. I couldn't figure it out. But I said, you know what? I'm not going to live. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm going to receive what God gave me. I'm going to shout about it. I'm going to testify about it. I'm going to praise Him for it. I'm praying like you. got a reason to worship God. you got a reason to pray to shout. Yeah. You got a reason to be so much. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Yeah. Your faith, you get a hold of God, it'll override those natural facts. Yep. God. The doctor said this, and the baker said that, and your enemy said this, and your fellow believers might have said this, your situation might have said something. But what did God say? Yeah. yeah. What did God say? Mm. He said, let me help you. He cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. That's right. right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Go ahead and worship me in the midst of your troubles. Yep. Go ahead and praise me. Get off of that seat. Get off of that pew and praise and worship me. Yeah. If right. you need to pray, hit the altar. Don't worry about what sister so-and-so thing or brother so-and-so thing. Just pray about what I think. Yeah. I'll come through for you. Yeah. Every time. Yes. Every time. I'm just saying, never let, never let, in spite of the facts. That's God right. can come through. Yes. Amen. God. You get a word from God. Amen. It doesn't matter what the fact says. That's, That's right. right. Investigators, you know, they, they set out to study the facts about crime and accidents and different situations. Right. Lord. The doctors, they do tests and blood work and examination and head rays and try to come up with a diagnosis to, that will help you with whatever's wrong with your body. The government, they send out, they spend a lot of money. You know, your tax dollars, amen, <laughs> studying the facts. They send out spies and they use satellites and, and they gather all the facts. And one overlooked fact can change everything. Uh -huh. All right. Come on. That's right. Come on. Yeah. So the fact says, where have you failed? Well, you might have failed God. But don't overlook the one that can lift you back up. That's right. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I get this scripture right. It's in Job 29, 22. And I was writing this note down on a different sermon. And I missed one letter. And God checked me on it. And that verse, if I've got to 29, 22, I believe it is. It says that when man has fallen and they have failed, I may not have it exactly right. Will you look it up right quick? So we are. It says, when men have been cast down, there is lifting up, and God shall save the humble person. Mm -hmm. Well, I was writing that note down. I wrote down, there is a lifting up. God check him right there. You know why? Because a lifting up mm -hmm. is sounds like one time. But it says there is lifting up as continual. Right. Come on. Constant lifting. Yes, sir. There is lifting up. There's lifting. Amen. That does not give you a license to sin. It's just telling you. Amen. It's a privilege to understand that it's not by might. 
right. it's not the power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. Right. When you confess, when you confess your faults to him and you repent, the Bible said that he is just to forgive. And the blood of Jesus does what? Covers us and cleanses us from all, all unrighteousness. Yep. Hallelujah. That ought to make you much of the shack right now. <laughs> right. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yep. I'll make it on I got that. Thank you, Lord. Stop. 22 and 29. What is it? 22 and 29. Go on and read that. It was very encouraging to me. But it's not a lifting up. It just says there is lifting up. Mm-hmm. Thank God for that continual. Right. He's an everlasting God. Yeah. His love, the Bible says, Jeremiah said, His love is everlasting. He's everlasting. Right. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you. Goodness. Thank you. Oh, Lord. How do you get there? Man. Notwithstanding, people don't say that people just forsook me. You come up with that word. I failed. Never let someone make a mistake. But in spite of the fact, you may be sick now, but I'm here. God hadn't left you. He hadn't abandoned you. In spite of the fact, He's still there. He's still there. Call upon Him. Open your mouth. See, you've got to talk. You have got. You have not because you. Amen. Amen. We are the offspring of a speaking God. Lord, we've got to use our mouth, and we got to ask. Amen. Let your request be known. Amen. The preacher did this morning when he was praying with people. Ask. He said, You want the Holy Ghost? You want to refill it? Ask. Yeah. Yep. Ask. Yep. Yeah, I've got to preach your thoughts, but he wants you to ask. Yeah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> you understand? You Gravity can. keeps that plane on the ground. Yep. But there's a greater fact. That's right. The fact is, Trust and lift. weighs a lot. But there's another fact called aerodynamics. Mm-hmm. And it Rust flies. And lift. It will lift it up. There's a greater fact. There's a greater grace. There's grace and then there's great grace. Oh, yes, mm. Hezekiah would be able to tell you about that. When that prophet came in, he's sick. King Hezekiah, is it Hezekiah I'm talking about it? Hezekiah, he was sick under death. Yep. Here comes prophet Isaiah. He can see him coming across the court. I can just say, he said, here comes the man of God. The only, the only thing he ever knew about God back in the day was through the prophet. That's it. Maybe he's got good news for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that prophet walks in and says, does the guy get your house in order? Yep. Because you're going to die and not live. How'd you like to get a prophecy like that? <laughs> then he just turns and walks out. Yep. And he's walking across that court. You can read it in Kings and also in Isaiah. He turned his face to the wall. That's right. You know, I've tore down them idols that my dad built up. He was a wicked king. And I've torn them idols down. And I've served you. And my death cannot be any glory to you. I can't praise you from the grave. But if you'll spare my life, I promise you, I'm just kind of paraphrasing on this part, I promise you that I will give you praise every day for the rest of my life. And God turned that prophet around. He said, I'm going to spare his life. Go tell him I'm going to get him 15 more years. That's right. Now, you see, there there is great grace in something. My Lord, we need to be praying to God. We need to be worshiping Him. Say, God, I'll do what i got to do for you. I'll praise you when I get to church. I'll praise you when I get up in the mornings. I'll give you the glory that you deserve. Amen. It don't matter. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. I'm not going to let nobody shut me down. I'm going to do it. And God will come through for you. Yes, yes, he, will. yes he will. You know why? Because you're being faithful. Thank you. And when you're faithful, he's faithful. He's always faithful. Thank you. The very fact that sin and failure can keep you down and get you Thank down. You. But let me introduce something to you. Not everybody likes this word. Repentance. God is faithful. <laughs> yeah. Let me introduce repentance. Let me introduce the blood of the Lamb to you. Yes. Let me introduce you to you the love of God. Praise God. Let me introduce you the grace of God. 
God. Notwithstanding, in spite of that, you can still win. Because God is for you and He's not against you. But we have to confess our faults to Him and repent when we need to and hold on to Him and He'll come through. Nevertheless, in spite of that, notwithstanding, God will do it. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. The woman said, well, you need water, but the well is deep and you don't have anything to draw with. God has not ignored the facts. Nope. The facts are not always real. You forget those natural facts sometimes and depend on the supernatural. Yeah. You know? She ended up saying, she got a revelation. See, I told you this morning, you can praise without a God, but you can't worship without a revelation. Right. This woman at the well, she had heard about the Messiah. Yep. She didn't know him. She never met him. But she heard about it. She heard about you know why God stopped at the border of Samaria with the disciples? And He said, I must need go in there. Yeah. In John 4. I must need go in there. And He had just left Judea where they were supposedly a bunch of Christians having something going on. But they were having a controversy. And Jesus got tired of hearing all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, John yeah, baptized more people than Jesus. No, Jesus baptized more people than John. Well, they didn't know what they were talking about. Jesus never baptized anybody. Yep. His followers did that. So he got tired of hearing that. And the Bible says in the third verse of John 4, and he left Judea and headed for Samaria. Yep. And if you'll trace that word back, left, there's a context meaning that he left for a purpose. Mm -hmm. ah, come on. Left for a reason. And he's got 12 disciples going with him. And they get to the border of Samaria. And he says, I'm going to go in there. And they go, whoa. We don't fellowship with them people. We a bunch of half breed Jews. The Syrians conquered them years ago and bred into them. We don't fellowship. Does that sound like anything you've ever heard? We don't fellowship with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus said, You go buy meat. I always thought, man, that's a big carryout. That's 12 guys will get lunch. Mm -hmm. go, get, go, you go buy meat. I must be going there. You see, he already knew that that woman. And had been married five times. Uh -huh. yep. And she was with a man now living with him, but she wasn't married to him. She, he already knew that stuff. And he knew she would come to the well. When? The sixth hour of the day. The middle of the day. Why? Because she had a bad past. And she didn't want to be around people. She didn't come early in the morning like everybody else because she got a bad past. But Jesus said, I see a heart that wants to know me. She knows about me. She's heard about me, but she wants to know me. She has a heart that's interested. So I'm going to be sitting on her way home. She shows up. Yep. That's right. You know the story. How he asked for a drink. She said, why would you be a Jew ask a Samaritan for a drink? Well, if you knew the water I give, you know, if you drink the water I give, you never thirst again. Boy, that got her in stuff. What does that mean? And you know the story. Go get your husband. Well, I don't have one. And he said, you speak well. In other words, you tell the truth, but you have five. And the one you're with is not your husband. And that, no, that's right. Well, he explains the thing. She said, well, you know, I perceive that you're a prophet. Telling me my past. Perceive that you're a prophet. And you say that Jerusalem is a place where men should worship. But my fathers worshiped on this mountain. My uncle George and my Aunt Bertha, they worship here. Matter of fact, his whole family got this whole mountain dedicated to religion. Mm -hmm. Come on. Woo! Come on. Oh. Our Did it sound like you got rid with it? Now we no. You worship, you don't know what. Lord, you don't know beans about what you're doing. We know. I'm telling you, woman, the day's coming and it's here now. It is ever a matter if you worship on this mountain in Jerusalem. But my father seeketh such that will worship him spirit. in spirit and in truth. Yes, sir. Yeah. Woo! Well, the Messiah's coming, she said, and he'll tell us all things. And you hear, he blow her socks off. I mean, he get, she got a revelation. He that speaketh to you, I am He. Yeah. Right. What happened? Yeah. What happened? The same thing. Yeah. She got excited. She began to worship. Yeah. And she began to rejoice. Yeah. And she left her water pot sitting right there on the well. He's going to be the whole well. He's going to be the living water. What I need a water bucket for. I need the water I never thirst again. And she began to witness to her city. And she won her city. She won her city to the Lord. Yeah. When you get a revelation, man, then you can worship God. Yeah. 
Mm. That guy. Come on. It was a fact. Come on. Lord, you know, all these brothers and sisters over here with Saul. You might listen to him. David, that's why we're not fighting. Yeah. David said, listen to me. I was taking care of my family's sheep, and a lion come out to take the sheep, and the Spirit of God come on me, and I took that lion out. The bear yeah. Yeah. Took him out. Yeah. Then the bear did the same thing. Yeah. And if the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God can move on me to fight the lion and the bear, I'm here to tell you, he can help me destroy this man that's taken to the country of God, the Israel, that's defined them, this uncircumcised demon, amen, that's defiling this land, defiling our Lord God, amen, he can move on me and I can take him out. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Nevertheless, in spite of the fact, I might right. be a boy. I might yeah. only have a slingshot. But I'm going to declare something, amen, and declare something that's not as though it was. Goliath, you come at me with a spear and a sword and a shield. I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts of, the, of, the, of Israel, and I promise you I'm going to cut your head off. I don't have a sword, but I'm going to cut your head off. He declared things that was not as though it was, and it come to pass because nevertheless, Notwithstanding, he's part of the fact the Lord right. came through. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. Yeah. Glory to God. There was a time when David got real discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul might have, you know, Paul might have had a license to be discouraged one time. You stand in front of that. He could have been a typical Pentecost. Felt sorry for himself and sucked his thumb. Yep. And all these people walked away from me. Man, they forsook me. Nobody stood for me. I had to stand alone. I failed. My friends beat me up. and Sometimes I beat myself up. But then here it comes. Yep. And always standing. Yep. In spite of the fact, the Lord strengthened me. Yep. When everybody else walked away, the man named Jesus walked in. <laughs> yeah, come on. Woo! Yeah. Let me tell you what he's done for me. He put my feet. He took me out of the mark clay, put my feet on the rock to stay. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. He put a song in my heart and praise on my lips. Right. I'm gonna tell you, he come through for me. He brought me out of the hospital a few times. He took me out of the honky tonks years ago. He yeah. brought me out of the whorehouses. He brought me out of all that stuff. But yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I got a reason to rejoice because Standing, nevertheless, when my people yeah. said, You'll never be as good as your mom and daddy was. You ain't nothing but a car old church. I mean, you'll never be what they were. But nevertheless, in spite of the fact, notwithstanding, the Lord pulled me into an altar of repentance and he baptized me with the Holy Ghost. And I'm preaching the word of God. And then because he allowed me to be not be destroyed, but he brought me here. And I'm not going to let him down. Thank you, Lord. Right. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Spite of the fact. Psalm 73, David. Said, you know, he got kind of discouraged. Oh, the wicked prospered. They're fat. They don't have problems with this. And he was so discouraged. And he said, I'm crucifying myself. I'm paraphrasing. You know what I'm talking about. You know where it's at. They're winning and I'm losing. God doesn't even seem to be on the throne. And I'm just barely getting by. God help me out. Hear myself, I've done that stuff before. So foolish. And David said, Oh, how foolish I was. How ignorant I was. Amen. Because he come back and he said, David, I'm still here. I'm still with you. Amen. I'm still on the throne. You just told you've had some bad moments. You had a bad episode. Guess what? I'm not gonna throw you under the bus. Yeah. Right. Church people will be throwing you under the bus, but God said, I'm not going to throw you under the bus. Right. Amen. Come on. I ain't forsaken you. You had a bad moment. You're having a downtime. But all you got to do is call up on me. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, forgive me. Help me. And God, He's just to forgive. Yeah. Yes, yes He is. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Right. Love of Jesus still is powerful. Somebody said that from us. Yes. He doesn't lose His power. Don't lose that same blood that cleans you the first time. When you repent, get it right. That same blood 
See, here's the deal. God don't put us on probation. Nope. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Can you get a word for what I'm talking? Come on. I know what I'm talking about. He'll put us on probation. Come on. He'll put you on probation. If you mess up one time, you go back to the back. But God doesn't do that. Amen. When you fall out of altar and repent, He's just it's to forget. Yes, and you can come up a new creature in Him. You can come in here a failure. You can come in here a backslider. And the blood can change you and you can go out the door sound of victory tonight. Yeah. yeah. Well, glory. Well, glory. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jesus. I'm glad we live under this dispensation of time. I'm glad we don't have to bring our livestock in here and then do a bloody mess over here, sacrificing our best bull or our best cow, our best our turtle dove or lamb or something, just to roll our sins for a year away. And then the priest has got to call God and say if he approves of our sacrifice. And then, but Jesus, the pay your sacrifice. Right. He ran for you. Oh. He was tortured for you. He would yeah. pay your sacrifice. And you don't have to go to that old priest that's behind that veil. Because after Jesus died, that old veil was ripped from top to bottom. And he became your high priest. Oh, and you yeah, can go directly to Jesus. And he hears you when you pray. He hears you when you repent. He hears you when you praise him. He hears you. You can cast a curse upon him. Yeah. And that same blood can cleanse you. That's right. Yeah. The blood of the true lamb. Yeah. Never loses its power. Nevertheless, <laughs> my God, you know, you need to speak to me, speak to me spiritual. Don't think it's foolish to be spiritual. No. Some people act like you're not right in here because you're real spiritual. My friend, Carl Garcia, he's spiritual most all the time. Sometimes I think he's a little silly. <laughs> but I have to commit his faith. So yeah. I think it's always there. Yeah. He's always texting me and giving encouragement to me. He texts me on the go. How you doing, my brother? I couldn't even read it. I had to get Cheryl to read it. She said, I told him you can't read it. And just text me. And he's still texting me. You know why? Because he's expecting me to be able to read it. Come on. Right. Yep. It's not foolish to be spiritual. No. Nope. But I think it's stupid to be real carnal. Yes, it is. Right. Yeah, carnal people do a lot of stupid stuff. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they don't expect us to think they're crazy. When they go to a football game and they paint their hair all different colors and they get drunk and paint on going crazy. No, all kind of stuff. Yep. I don't think it's crazy to shout. No. Worship God. That's right. Amen. You know, after they get up there in them stands and hoop and holler for their ball team. Right. Amen. And they're, some of these, those guys up there are a bunch of whoremongers down there chasing that ball. Mm. They couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible looking at Jesus. And they're down there rooting for them. If they come to church, they'll get mad if you got their parking lot. Oh. Yeah. Well. Uh-oh. Something yeah. I said? Uh-oh. They got my seat. Uh-oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know I'm not giving you excited you like I should. Y'all listen to me. No, that's good. Come on. Yeah. You need to sit to me, church. The devil talks to you. The news media talks to you. Your feelings talk to you. Your fear talks to you. Failure talks to you. Frustrations talk to you. Every once in a while you need to hear from God. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Come on. You need to hear God say, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. That's right, coach. I'll give you a little secret. The promises of God are not self-fulfilling. Mm. The promises of God are revelations of divine intentions. Okay. What does that mean? And God says, here's what I'm going to do. Now what are you going to do to make it happen? Hmm. Okay. Come on. What did I tell you? It's always up to us. We've got to move first. we got to will. Come on. Mm. Praise God. We need to hear from God. Yep. And we need to watch, all, watch out for these facts that you face to start hearing. If you pay attention to the news, you're going to start hearing a bunch of facts. 
You know what they do? They exaggerate the facts. They put you in fear. They exaggerate things to make you afraid to come back to church. Afraid to get around other people. God, y'all want to pray over your food, don't you? Yes. Why do you do that? You pray because you don't want that food to hurt you. That's right. That's and right. if you pray and you're thankful for it, you give thanks. I mean, we do that. I mean, God said to do that. That's right. Nothing you eat or harm you. you know, sometimes we get a belly ache, we get something wrong. But I'm going to tell you, we forget in our hearts what we're really doing at church and at home when we're praying and we're thanking God. I'm telling you, we need to get it in our hearts and our minds that this is about that walk with God that we can continue to have so that we'll make it through the tough times that's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. We're coming. I don't try to be a preacher of doom, a prophet of doom, but I'm telling you, I didn't see the writing on the wall. You're going to go through some more stuff. You got one. It's pretty simple. You got another election coming up. Come on. Yes, we do. Well, it's not the fact. All these natural facts. If we could just learn to quit putting... You know, it's a funny thing. We can get a word... From a man of God, and we think we gotta just talk about it, discuss it. We get a word from the doctor, and that's it. We believe him. Well, yeah. Come on. We just tell you some problems we have that we need to Come get past. If we're really gonna have our faith, walk by faith. Come on. No. Got too many Pentecostal people walking by feelings. Yeah, that's, that's true. Don't feel, don't feel. You know the last thing you're healing is feeling? <laughs> what did the blind man have to do? He, you know, he wants to be healed. And Jesus spits on the ground. That's always a kind of a funny story to me. You know, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. He made that mud and he puts it on that guy's eyes. Yeah, and then yep. he said, You go wash in the pool of salt. That's it. Oh, I'm not going to get that. <laughs> I ain't healed. I got mud on now. Yeah. <laughs> Some way, somehow, he obeyed what God said. Yes, he did. And then the healing came. Yep. That's right. Yeah. He obeyed what the Lord told him to do. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Abraham and Sarah. Yeah. Abraham and Sarah. Yeah. God, you promised me a son many years ago. Here I am, hundred year old. They got one. Yeah. God. God promised him the son. Jesus sent three guys and the angels come, and when they reiterated the fact that he's going to have a son, you know, Sarah heard him yeah. in the tent, and she laughed. Yep. She mocked them. I'm hundred year old. No, Shall I have pleasure? <laughs> I can just see God. Hey, come on, baby. Come on, we'll show you something. Come down here by the seashore. You see all this sand? It's Abraham Walker. <laughs> see all this sand? It's your heritage. Mm -hmm. It's your children. Well, I ain't had a son yet. It's going to be your heritage. You can't even number your heritage. Look, at the stars. Look up at the star. Can you count the stars? I'll show you something. It's your heritage, number of your lineage. Yeah. But God, you understand. He and Sarah, man, we play who know it back. We shake hands and say, see you later. <laughs> but nevertheless, in spite of the fact. <laughs> yeah, notwithstanding. Woo! Right. <laughs> well, Sarah got kind of geeky, you know the story. Go ahead. She said, You just sleep with my handmaid, Hagar. Yeah. The bond woman. I won't go into that. I, some people get upset when I go into that. <laughs> mm. Praise God, praise God. Yes. You know, I hope I've encouraged you. I, I'm not getting through all this stuff, but, you know. But I know that God can override the natural facts. And we got to believe that as children of God. We, we got to be known in this community. 
You need to be known of people that God hears your prayers and He answers them. Come on, right? You want to be different than the phenomenal world? Yep. God hears your prayers and He answers them. Yep. Amen. Woo! Come on. Them bunch of holy rollers down there. God must think that I love them because they sure get some miracles done. Come on. You know why you get them done? It's because you start declaring things and you begin to worship Him and you begin to praise Him and you quit worrying about what so and so thinks. That's right. Yep. You need to worry about what God thinks. That's right. And He likes it when we act foolish for Him. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Paul said we. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we've been made foolish for Christ's sake. Praise God. Praise your holy name. Think about Lazarus. I'm going to give it up here. He kicks a bucket. And they throw him in a hole. He's laying there corrupted and rotten and dying. He's already dead. He's decaying, stinking. That's a fact. See? In the resurrection, he's standing right there in front of Martha and she's still here studying the facts. He's been dead four days. He stinketh. Mm -hmm. That's right. In the resurrection, he's standing face to face with her. Yep. And she's so much engrossed in the facts that he died and you're too late getting here, Jesus. Yeah. That she can't understand the resurrection is standing right there. Right. There. right. Wow. In spite of that fact. You know there's no telling how many people in the cemetery there in that country there that was named Lazarus. Mm -hmm. But when God said Lazarus come forth. See the Bible says that the dead are dead they know nothing in this world. Right. His spirit's in another world. Yep. But if we said Lazarus come forth that spirit that was living in another world yeah. heard of that <laughs> we're right back to that body. Right. Then it went to the right one. <laughs> <laughs> he knows uh, your name. Yeah. yeah. Don't ever forget that. Don't yeah. Thank you. Despite the fact that he's been dead. Glory to God. Despite the fact sometimes we become kind of dead, spiritually God will raise us back up. If we seek him, if we ask. Right. Come on. God forgive me. I've been too lax in my worship. I've been too mad in my dedication. And I know it's so easy to get caught up in all the things we do every day. Yeah. All the work. Kids go to school. Got to pay bill. But I'm going to tell you, we need to find a few minutes to talk to the Lord. Yeah. You know why? Every because day. He desires that just like He did when He created the first human beings. He came in the cool of the day every day. Man, He can do with them. Yep. And you know he still wants that? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He's not interested in having a flame with you on the weekend. That's right. He's not interested in a one night stand on Wednesday night. Come on. He's not interested in a affair with you during the Bible time. Yeah, come on. He wants you oh. to commune with him every day. Oh, every day. Come on. God help us yeah. to take a few minutes and talk to our Creator. Talk to the one that can override the natural facts. With the supernatural power that we say we believe in. True. Just stand your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. God wants to step into your impossibility. I'm not denying that there's facts, but I'm declaring that there's a greater fact. That's right. There's a greater factor. Yeah. It's called Jesus. We can get our conclusion, our conclusion corrected. Yeah. Amen. Because Jesus can step in no matter what the doctor said. That's it. No matter what the government said. No matter. No matter. God can step in and He can change all that. I mean, believe yes. that He is a guy that does amen, the impossible. Yes. Impossible. Yes. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Yes, sir. None like Him. He's a great physician. He's a great God of heaven. Sometimes we have to have faith. I don't understand why God don't heal some things in my body. He's healed me before. But I, I just have to thank God. I still got to trust Him. Ain't that right, Joel? My God. You got to understand. 
God in heaven and the devil made a deal about Job. You ever wonder why you make a deal about one of us with the devil? Because they don't trust us. The sons of God come together and the devil comes also. And God asks Satan, if you can sit in a circle, Job, Consider him, or you can. You got this hedge around him. <clears throat> Let me take what he has, because a man is no better than what he's got. Let me take what he's got and he'll curse you to your face. I can see God looking at Job and then looking at the devil and saying, "Take your best shot, stupid." No. Takes everything, even ten children. Ten children that once dead. Everything he owns dead. One servant made it back to to tell him what happened all of his lifestyle. Took everything. The devil approaches God again. Skin for skin. Man's no better than his flesh. You let me touch you, and he'll curse you to your face. I just see God looking over stupid and looking at Job again. You can touch him, but you can't take his life. He's stricken with sores and boils all over him. Sitting out there, his wife comes out, don't understand. Just curse God and die. Then he's got these three rich former friends, Joel's comforters, little friends, I don't need enemies. Yep. They come over and they stare at him for seven days and never speak a word. And when they begin to talk, I don't know why get mad. You know what they sound like? Sound like good televangelists. Must be sin in your life. Send me that seat for you. Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Naked I came to this world, and naked I'll leave. And I love his statement. And he knew the path I take. See, he didn't blame the devil like we do. He said that when he had tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold and try to defy him. And he knew the path I take. He says, many things are appointed unto me. See how that scripture go? Many things. He says, oh, we're starting to get that. You need to hear that scripture right there. I won't quit. It's coming. You to hear about Yep. 
You've got to believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a revealer to you who God is. We've got to have it. He only do us with power from on high. He said, I'm going to go. He tells us that we can do things according to the power that dwelleth in us. That's why we have to have a maintenance plan. And we have to keep coming to church. And we have to keep worshiping. And we have to keep praying. And we have to keep fasting. And we have to keep oh, oh, reading the Bible and getting that word in us. To develop that power in us to resist what's coming on the face of this world. God help us. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank y'all for praying for me today. Thank y'all for allowing me to come. Too great here tonight. I, I felt a lot of hindrance, but it may not be anybody here. It may just be me. But I know for a fact what I've told you is truth, and I hope it encourages you. Amen. 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 We can't make it. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to the pastor. If you want prayer, you come up here.